So let's look now at the carbon cycle. And remember, carbon is the key element of all living things. Everything that's alive or organic contains carbon. And carbon can be found in a variety of places in living things. One place is carbohydrates, the source of energy. So all living things require carbohydrates, and this gives them the energy to grow, to reproduce, to move. This carbohydrate contains carbon. You may be familiar with another key component, or heard it before, protein. Proteins are required. These are the structural parts of bodies. So proteins are required by all living organisms. If we think of us as human beings, the proteins are the things that make up our muscles. So carbohydrates, proteins, they all contain carbon. And there's a third component, the lipids or the fats. These are our long-term storage of energy. And again, a variety of organisms contain fats. They hold those fats in a variety of ways. They offer insulation. But these lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates, they all contain carbon. And they are all key elements of everything that is living, all living things. So where does this carbon actually exist? Well, there's a lot of places. One, the atmosphere. You're probably familiar with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Oceans, living things, fossil fuels, forests, all of these are carbon-based. They all contain carbon. And so if you look at this category of things, atmosphere, oceans, living things, fossil fuels, forests, carbon is everywhere. It exists everywhere. Now, some of these sources of carbon are called carbon reservoirs. And a carbon reservoir is something that can store the carbon and then slowly release it over time. A carbon reservoir. That's different than what's called a carbon sink. A carbon sink is a reservoir that actually absorbs more carbon than they release. A couple examples there, forest. Trees, plants, they take in a lot more carbon than they release. And eventually that carbon would be released, whether they die and decompose or are burnt and released as carbon dioxide. Oceans, same thing. The oceans absorb a lot more carbon than they give off in a year over a long period of time. This carbon sink. So we have a carbon reservoir and a carbon sink, these sources of carbon. Now, all of this together is what's called the carbon cycle. And this is a picture from your data booklet, and you can see this cycling of carbon. Carbon going through, following these arrows, and here is one small cycle through here, or it could be a much larger cycle of coming through here as carbon dioxide into the ocean and then deep down potentially being released back. It's a cycle of carbon, carbon taking many different forms. Now when we look at this picture, down here is our important piece, the key to the carbon cycle. Anything in a rectangle is the amount of carbon that is stored. The stored amount of carbon in gigatons. So the carbon stores are in the rectangle. The carbon exchange, meaning carbon going up, carbon going down, are in the ovals. So when we look at this, we're going to use this picture to see the differences in carbon, whether it's being released or stored or exchanged throughout. Well, the carbon cycle is a process where carbon is recycled through the ecosystems, constantly going through the ecosystem. And most times this recycling occurs through photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Plants taking in carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen, cellular respiration taking in oxygen, releasing carbon dioxide. The thing about photosynthesis and cellular respiration, drawing on our chemistry, is the products of one are the reactants for the other. So what you get from photosynthesis becomes the reactant for cellular respiration and vice versa. What does this do? 
Well, it keeps a balance of carbon dioxide, CO2 and O2, and this balance is necessary to maintain a healthy ecosystem or healthy biosphere. When we talk about problems with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the problem is there's too much carbon dioxide and not enough of this balance of carbon dioxide and oxygen. Well, let's look at photosynthesis. And we've already talked a little bit before about photosynthesis. Well, it really just is a chemical reaction. Photosynthesis is just this. Carbon dioxide, CO2, combining with H2O, and through that process of photosynthesis, we get this thing and oxygen, O2. And that C6H12O6 is really just glucose, a sugar. And most plants, this is the process. They take carbon dioxide and water and combine it to form oxygen, which is given off, and then some form of sugar, some form of glucose that they store. This then allows the carbohydrates that are formed in the plants to be passed through the food chain and through the food webs. And this is where we as human beings get our glucose, our carbohydrates from the plants. When a plant dies and decomposes, the carbon is then released into the soil and it's absorbed by the soil and can, over time, if large amounts of carbon are released into the soil, can become a fossil fuel or a marine sediment. And this is where the carbon will get stored, whether it's in a fossil fuel, whether it's down deep in the bottom of the ocean, and that carbon is actually put into a reservoir. Well, the opposite of photosynthesis is cellular respiration. And again, this is what we as human beings, the breathing we do. And what do we do? Well, we take glucose in our body, combine it with oxygen, and we get water and breathe out carbon dioxide. It's just this process in reverse. This allows the carbon in carbon dioxide to be released back into the atmosphere. And our breathing out releases that. Carbon is also released into the atmosphere through the combustion, the burning of fossil fuels. Now, if it was just cellular respiration, we could maintain that balance. It's this consumption of fossil fuels. It's this excess carbon being released into the atmosphere that is causing many, many problems with climate change, and high levels of carbon dioxide. We can't maintain that balance within an ecosystem or within the biosphere. And it's especially, and this process is even exasperated more if we remove trees and plants. There is less plants, less trees to take in that carbon dioxide, and the carbon dioxide builds up. Through photosynthesis and cellular respiration, oxygen is also cycled through. If we look at both the chemical equations, oxygen is also a component. So sometimes this carbon cycle is also referred to as the oxygen cycle because oxygen is a key component, is also recycled through photosynthesis and cellular respiration.